Did cell phone radiation cause a 100% increase in brain cancer in 20 years? According to the Danish Cancer Registry, a report was published on September 30, 2024, for the latest cancer statistics for 2023. The report shows that central nervous system tumors, CNS, and brain tumors are increasing sharply and are among the most rapidly increasing cancers in the last 10 years between 2014 and 2023. This applies to all tumor forms. The statistics thus contradict those who point out that brain tumor incidence does not increase, for example, Radiation Safety Authority, which was used as an argument that mobile phone use is not linked to increased risk of brain tumor or other cancer. In the past two decades, mobile phones have become indispensable tools connecting billions of people across the globe. But behind the convenience and technological advancements lies a disturbing reality that most don't want to confront, the growing evidence that long-term exposure to cell phone radiation could be linked to the sharp rise in brain cancer rates. Recent data from the Danish Cancer Registry shows a doubling in brain and central nervous system CNS tumors over the past 20 years. This data contradicts earlier studies, such as the Danish Cohort Study, which concluded that there was no significant risk of cancer from mobile phone use. But those conclusions are now being challenged as more detailed and transparent data emerges. So the question is, did cell phone radiation cause this surge in brain cancer? The simple answer is, it's very likely. The Danish Cancer Registry's report for 2023 provides hard numbers that are impossible to ignore. From 2004 to 2023, the incidence of brain and CNS tumors in Denmark doubled. For women, the rate went from 24.1 cases per 100,000 to 42 per 100,000, a staggering 107% increase. For men, the rate increased by 90%, from 21.1 to 32.5 cases per 100,000. These are not small statistical blips. They represent a massive increase in real-world cases of one of the deadliest forms of cancer. The Danish Cohort Study, A Flawed Foundation One of the most frequently cited studies in defense of mobile phone safety is the Danish Cohort Study, which followed over 350,000 mobile phone users and concluded there was no significant risk of brain cancer. But let's be blunt, this study is deeply flawed. Exclusion of heavy users the Danish cohort study excluded business and corporate users, the people who were likely the heaviest users of mobile phones during the study period. These are precisely the individuals who would have had the highest exposure to RF EMF, and their exclusion skewed the results in favor of lower risk conclusions. Exposure misclassification. Participants were classified based on whether they had a mobile phone subscription, not on their actual phone usage. This is absurd. Someone with a phone subscription might use their device once a week while someone without a subscription might borrow a phone daily for hours. The study essentially misclassified users and downplayed the real exposure people had to RF radiation. Short follow-up time brain tumors, especially gliomas, can take decades to develop. The study didn't account for the long latency periods needed to properly assess the full risk of RF EMF exposure. If you cut off your study before the cancers have time to develop, of course, you'll conclude that there's no risk. It's like testing a cigarette smoker for cancer after six months of smoking and saying, well, no cancer yet, must be safe. Industry influence the elephant in the room. Let's not pretend that the wireless industry hasn't played a role in shaping the narrative around mobile phone safety. The Interphone study, another large-scale study conducted between 2000 and 2004, was partly funded by the mobile phone industry. Despite finding an increased risk of glioma among moderate phone users 30 minutes a day, the study downplayed this risk in its overall conclusions. The mobile industry's influence is all over these studies. When money from big telecom companies funds the research, it's no surprise that the conclusions are tailored to fit industry-friendly outcomes. This isn't speculation. It's a well-documented conflict of interest that undermines the integrity of the findings. The surge in tumor cases, coincidence, or consequence. The timing of the increase in brain cancer cases is too close to the widespread adoption of mobile phones to be ignored. In 2004, mobile phones were becoming ubiquitous, and by 2014, smartphone usage was near universal, with many people spending hours per day on their devices. RF EMF exposure has increased exponentially with each generation of wireless technology, from 2G to 3G, then 4G, and now 5G. The 2023 Danish Cancer Registry report clearly shows that the increase in tumor cases started around 2014, 
coinciding with the rise of 4G technology and the explosion in smartphone usage. This is not some random uptick. It fits the timeline of increasing RF radiation exposure perfectly. RF EMF, a carcinogen in disguise? The World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer, IIRC, has classified RF EMF as possibly carcinogenic to humans. This classification alone should raise red flags. We're not talking about some benign environmental factor. We're talking about something that could very well be causing irreversible harm to millions of people every day. The National Toxicology Program, NTP, and other studies have shown clear evidence of cancer in animals exposed to cell phone radiation. If it causes cancer in rats, there's no reason to believe humans are immune. The only difference is that the effects may take longer to become apparent in humans because of our longer lifespan. The need for action, stop ignoring the evidence. We cannot afford to sit back and wait for more people to get brain cancer before we take action. The evidence is there, cell phone radiation is not safe at least not at the levels we are currently exposed to. The Danish Cancer Registry data is the wake-up call we needed and it's time for governments, health agencies, and the public to face the truth. We need updated safety standards that reflect the real risks of long-term RF EMF exposure. Not just the thermal effects, but the non-thermal biological effects that are likely contributing to the rising cancer rates. Regulatory bodies like the FCC need to stop listening to industry lobbyists and start protecting public health. Is cell phone radiation to blame? The evidence points to yes. The 100% increase in brain cancer cases over the past 20 years is too significant to be explained by anything other than environmental factors, and cell phone radiation is the most likely culprit. The flawed studies of the past no longer hold water in light of the mounting data from independent sources. We're dealing with a public health crisis in the making, and it's time to act before more lives are lost. We can no longer afford to ignore the potential dangers of cell phone radiation. The price of inaction is too high.